So I have now done half of the work of adding a new chart to the dashboard. I went into our editor, selected a chart from our gallery, customized it, made it look the way I wanted it to, dropped it here into the dashboard. But this no, does not have real data behind it yet. So now I'm going to do the other half of the work, and that is hooking it up to real data. To do that, I'm going to come over here to select the graph in the object browser and come over to the right hand side and select data funnel. Now a data funnel is Corda's patented technology. A data funnel is a data connector that can connect to virtually any data source. Most of the time you would want to run the data funnel wizard so go ahead and select that and click next. This is going to now show you all of the different types of data sources that we can draw information from. Pulling things in from a relational database is probably the most common data source, but we can also pull things in from other file types. For instance, an Excel spreadsheet, a CSV or other flat file. We can also pull information in from an HTML source. We could go out to a website and scrape stock prices off of a table on the website, for example. We can pull information in from an OLAP cube. We can pull information from Business Objects Universe. We also have connection to SAP's Business Warehouse. We can pull information in from many other data warehouses as well. We also can connect to online sources like Salesforce.com. If you use Salesforce.com as your CRM system, we can pull information in from that directly. We also have a data funnel plug-in technology. We can write a custom data connector to proprietary data sources. So we can connect to information that you might have in your organization, even if it's not a standard data type, as long as there is some sort of way to log in to connect to that information, we can write a custom plugin that would allow you to do that. I am going to go ahead and tell it to pull it from a database. And I'm going to click the Next button. And now it is asking me what database I want to pull from. You can see that all of the major database types are built in. I could go ahead and select one of these data types and it would ask me then for the connection information. However, we do not recommend that you go in and put your connection information in every single time you create a new chart because it makes it difficult to administer later. We recommend instead that you set up a database alias. A database alias gives you the ability to go in and set your connection information to your database one time and then reuse that over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next and it's going to ask me which alias I want to use. Now I could use one that I have already set up but I'll show you an example of creating a new one. I will click the create button. It's going to ask me for my alias so I'm going to say this is my SQL Superstore alias. That's the database that I want to connect into. I'll click next. It's going to ask me which type of database it is. For this example I'm using MySQL but you can have any database that you have access to, of course, can be specified here. I'll then click Next. It's going to ask me for the connection information. So I would put in my username and password, uh, the host here, and the port, and I can test this connection. And you can see that I have successfully contacted my database. Once I've done that, I will click Next. It's going to ask me which of my database schemas I want to use. In this particular case, I'm going to use the Superstore database. I click Finish, and I have now created a new alias. I can now use this alias over and over again as I connect to this database to pull information in. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click Next. And it now is going to ask me for the query for this database. We have a query building program built into CenterView that will give you some help in building your data query. For instance, if I want to look at the store weekly rev table, it's showing me all of the different fields within the table. I could select these fields in order to build my data query. I could preview this query by clicking this preview button. It's going to come out and do this preview and load up the query results. You can see that I have those results down here. So I can go ahead and use this query building program or I can simply cut and paste from another program or type in the query myself. So if I want to say I want to select the state and the sum of revenue from the store weekly rev database and you can see that pops up right here. I'm going to go ahead and use that and I'm going to say group by state. So I have just typed in my own query using some help from the query building program. I'm going to preview that query and this is going to show me now uh, the information that I received from that query. 
The example that I'm using here is the example from the Superstore database that's available in our sample databases. I asked it to give me the sum of all of the revenue from the different states across the United States and this is what it's showing me here is a sum of all of the revenue for these 50 states. So I click Next. It's going to show me the results of this query. I click Finish. It drops this into the Center View Builder. So you can see from the object browser over here on the left side that because I am currently looking at the data funnel underneath this image, it is showing me the actual data. If I click on the graph itself, it will redraw this and show me the graph. You can see now that this graph is being fed from the live data. Now 50 pieces of information is too many pieces of information for a bar chart, but what I'm really looking for is to the top performing stores. I want to build a chart that has the top 10 stores. My database query just retort returned information for all 50 stores, but I only want the top 10, so I am going to sort and filter this information. We have a lot of data transformation capabilities built into center view. If I select the data funnel and come over here to the object palette, you can see all of the different transformation tools that we have. The ability to manipulate your columns, to do uh, transformations and other queries here. I can reverse rows, uh, do things like sorting. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to sort this. I'm going to tell it I want to do a numeric sort. It's going to ask me what to apply that sort to. I'm going to apply it to column one. As soon as I click on this apply to, it brings up some context sensitive help and examples here so that it can tell me what to apply it to. Now I want to apply this sort to column two, not column one. So go ahead and change that. Say column two, hit enter it's now going to redraw this sorted by column two. But I want to do this as a descending sort so that my highest values are on top. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And you can see now I'm sorted from highest to lowest. If I come back and look at this graph, I am going to have these values sorted from highest to lowest. So I'm getting a lot closer to what I want, which is the top 10 stores. But I still need to filter out some of this information. We can do that by going back to the data funnel and coming over here to the side and choosing filter. We have many different ways to filter information, but one of the easiest ways to do it is to simply disable some of the rows. Since I've already sorted this information, I'm going to just tell it to disable all the rows after my header row and my 10 pieces of information that I want to keep. So I'm going to keep 11 rows, disable the rest of them. It shows me the results of this. If I come back now and look at the graph, it's going to show me this graph, which now has my top 10 performing stores. So this is what I was looking for. This is now a live dashboard. I have gone in, created a new page in my dashboard, put an image inside of this page, and then connected this to a real database. This is now a live functioning dashboard. This, I hope, gives you an idea of the different types of things that you can do when you're building your dashboard. From this point, we could add additional pages. We could add additional charts or graphs or maps. We could go ahead and put in additional behaviors. We can put in hover text. What happens when you hover over the top of one of these pieces of information? You can customize what a drill down would look like. So from here, you can continue to build the dashboard with the building tools. I hope that this has given you a good general overview of what the Center View Builder can do. We welcome any questions or comments and would be happy to help you with additional information. Thank you.